Okay, so we are looking at the models of the atom, models of the hydrogen atom simulation. And since we can't view this on our iPad, we are going to, um, I'll run the simulation for you and you can make your observations. If you feel the need to rewind to re-see something um, or to uh, review something, uh, feel free to go ahead. You should have finished your pre-lab questions first. So if you haven't yet done that, make sure you take a look at that so that you understand what exactly it is that I'm talking about. So what we're trying to do is get a sense of how do we know what we know about the atom and take a look at some of the um, theories that um, scientists came up with about what the atom must look like based on observations that were made. So we're going to use this to help us understand and visualize what those scientists and their models were uh, all about. So we're going to turn on our beam here. Notice we've got the white light going for us and we'll start simulation. There's the white light. Okay, so this is white light, and this box here is zooming in and looking at what's going on here. And so this is a box of oxygen. It's a sample of oxygen, and this beam of white light is hitting it. We are also going to, well, notice here's the spectrometer. And we're going to start that up, too, just so we can see what happens as we're making our observations. All right, so notice... We don't know what exactly is in this box. We know there's hydrogen in there, but we're watching what happens to these. These are photons. So notice there's different colors of photons. We're trying to watch what happens to the photons as they pass near and through this box. And so that's what your observations should involve. So we want to look at, you know, which colors do I see going through? Are the same colors coming out? Um, are they going straight through? Are they bouncing off? Are all of them going through? Are all of them bouncing back? If they bounce off, are they bouncing off the same thing they came in as and so forth and so on? So just take a few minutes and keep observing. I'm going to slow this down just a little bit. Or not. All right, let's take a look at what question three asks us about. So you should have obviously looked at um, questions one and two and answered those questions based on what we've been doing. If you need to, go back and rewind to see what's going on. So number three, if I select monochromatic, so let's see what that involves. So notice how the beam of this light changes. So monochromatic, and then it gives me this scale here, so I can drag this along. Notice that as I drag this, this is nanometers, so that's a length measurement. And then notice when I get into these colors, notice how these photons have changed and how the beam has changed. Again, so notice the difference in the photons and the difference in the beams of light. All right. So we're going to go back to white light. And now we're going to move on to part five of the procedure. And so we are looking at the actual experiment. So this is what's observed. We've got our hydrogen sample. We've got light, uh, white light being shot through the sample or at the sample. And so now we're going to do some uh, prediction. So this is looking at the different models that we're going to talk about in class. I'm going to start with the billiard ball. And so we're making observations about what do we see these particles, or sorry, these photons doing. Um, so the idea here with looking at these predictions is if what's 
pictured here, so in this case the billiard ball, if that was what was behind that big question mark, so if that's what the structure looked like behind the big question mark of a hydrogen atom, um, would this be what you were observing? Would this look similar to what you just observed? So that's what we're thinking about and looking for. So don't forget to make note of what's happening on the spectrometer over here in each case, what's happening to photons. So again, if you picture that big question mark box here, does this look like what was happening? And so that's your observations. So you're observing what's happening to these photons when they get near this billiard ball. And does it support or not support the experiment? So does it look like what was happening in the experiment? Could that be the thing that's behind the mystery box or not? That's what you're answering and how does it support or not support the experiment? If you need to pause, go ahead and do that to write that up. I'm going to show you the classical solar system. Or sorry, this is the plum pudding. So notice there's this blob and then there's uh, the blue particle that's an electron. So notice how the photons are interacting with what's depicted there. Could that be what is behind the question mark box? Could that be what that hydrogen atom looked like in the original experiment? Notice the spectrometer also. Again, if you need to pause at any point in time, go ahead and do that. Here's the solar system. And we're going to have to repeat that. So notice the red in the middle, that's the proton electron swirling around and then bumping into the proton. All right, moving on to Bohr. I'm actually going to slow this down so we can see what's going on. So you'll notice the electron, if it gets hit with one of these photons, jumps around to another circle. It's already happened a few times. There it goes again. There it is up there. And then jumps down. Notice as it jumped down, that little blue photon came out. And then notice when it jumped down again, this came out of it. Let's go to the Broly. So this is the electron in this wavy patch here. So that's what you're looking at, how that changes when photons come in contact with it. I'm just going to speed this up a little bit. Slow it down again. And notice the spectrometer. And last, let's go to the Schrodinger. I'll speed this up a little bit. So notice our electrons are kind of these blurry patches here. So it's not one dot that we can see, but you can see the patches are changing location and size and shape. I'll slow this one down. Alright, and lastly, let's take a look at question six. So it says to use the Bohr model, and so we'll click on that. 
and we're going to use the show electron energy level diagram. So the n equals 1, 2, 3 is corresponding to these circles where the electron is. I'm just going to speed this up a little bit. So this is depicting how the electron is jumping. And it asks us to take a look at the help menu, the transitions. Let me just scooch this over here. So notice N, right? So those are energy level transitions. So going from one to two, again, gives us a wavelength in nanometers from one to three, one to four, etc. So go ahead and do what it asks you to do. Enter the first five wavelengths. So we're going to monochromatic. So first five, we've got 122. Notice that takes us into the UV range. So watch what happens to our electron jumps. I'm just going to reset this. So looking at the spectrometer as well. Let's go to 103. Again, observe how the electron's jumping around. Go up to 97. So notice the difference in how it's jumping around for 97 versus 103 versus 122. Notice the different colors of the squiggles on some of the transitions. Got 95. And lastly, 94. And it says to enter wavelengths that are not listed, so let's try that out. So how about, let's do a uh, 300. Let's see what happens. Right, how about let's do two hundred? How about an eight hundred? Oh, didn't like that one. How about seven hundred? Okay, so if there's any parts that you need to go back and rewatch, then I suggest that you do that and fill in the rest of your questions. And then this is going to relate to the models of the atom that we're going to talk about. So how do we know what we know about the atom today? And there were a lot of observations that were done, like we saw in this experiment, where we could observe photons passing through. We could observe photons, uh, some of them being deflected or some of them coming out with different amounts of energy. And the scientists at the time were trying to figure out, well, why is this happening? What's happening inside the atom, which we can't see, that would allow us to figure out what exactly is going on. And that is where we'll pick up in class.